Of course, it's no secret that all reality TV is fake to some degree. Some more than others. For example, there are some shows that are for the most part real but have a little bit of producer influence, like Wife Swap, where pretty much everything that the wives are reading off of were just typed up by the guys upstairs. And then on the other side, you have shows like MTV's Parental Control, which is probably the furthest from reality you can get. First of all, Fernando is gross. He likes to lick my daughter like she's a damn lollipop. And then roughly a billion shows in between. But if we're talking about mostly fake reality shows, nothing beats a good repo show. Out of the handful of ones that I've seen, they all have their own ways of going from zero to 100 all the time. For example, a few months ago we saw how a nice, peaceful chicken picking can turn upside down in a matter of seconds on Lizard Lick Towing. So today I wanted to take a look at a different show of the same variety that was actually suggested on the subreddit r slash Chris James. That show in question is Airplane Repo. There are so many things I love about this show, aside from just the 0 to 100 antics and everything being made out to be a world-ending threat. Pretty much every episode, someone is getting arrested, and not even just the people getting their stuff repossessed, like the main characters of the show getting arrested. Of course, we'll see all of that because I picked out a couple episodes that I thought would be uh, just a blast to watch. I chose this first one because the premise is Mike, one of our main repo men, has to steal a million dollar plane from under the nose of a skydive school owner. Also, they love to say million dollar plane. And don't get me wrong, a million dollars is a lot, I think, but when you're talking about planes, like, planes often are pretty expensive. <laughs> it's like if they were doing a repo on a Toyota RAV4 and they're like, this thing, 20,000 upwards of 30,000 with options. Yeah, it's a it's a Toyota RAV4. That that'll happen. But the part of this that I'm really interested in is how he plans to acquire this plane. Today, Mike's going undercover. His mission steal this million dollar aircraft from under the nose of the owner of a skydive school who's five months late on his payments. So yeah, he's just gonna go undercover in this skydiving class, skydive with the class, break off from the group, land in the airfield, and take the plane. Probably 700 different ways he could do this much quicker and easier, but for the sake of this video, I'm glad he's doing it this way. But don't you hate it when you drop your phone without a phone case? Man, I sure hope that makes sense after whatever I just played. You know what? I'll just have my editor fix it. Guess I didn't really think that one through. But now that we're in this deep, might as well take this time to thank the sponsor of today's video, Casetify. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Chris, didn't Andy King just do a Casetify sponsorship like this week? And yes, he did. And I bet he feels like a big man for doing his first. But you know what? I'm not worried. The universe has a way of sorting things out. Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory brand, known for their protective phone cases as well as their many global collaborations. Casetify makes cases that are 20% more protective, built four times military standards, test dropped 104 times, and guaranteed an 8.2 foot drop protection. <laughs> okay, I'm out of breath, but I mean, come on, look at that. But what makes Casetify great is not only their commitment to making safe and protective cases, but giving you as much customization as possible. For example, check out this bad boy I'm rocking right here. CJ, what do you think that stands for? Yeah, I don't know either. You can also go with a fun design like this one too, or something simple. It's up to you. I'm not your dad. Even though sometimes it kind of feels like it. And of course, on top of everything I've already mentioned, Casetify kills it with sustainability, especially with Recasetify, offering 51,000 cases that are 65% recycled and made with 20% less carbon emissions. They even offer other accessories like phone straps and charms that are perfect for when you're on the go. So if you guys want to try out Casetify for yourselves, check out my link below or go to casetify.com slash chrisjames for 15% off your order. Thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring, and now back to the video. You got the two runways like that. Fuel docks are right there. You got a row of hangers here and there's a row of hangers up there. So while this already sounds like a pretty intricate plan, we really see how complicated it is when he draws it out in the fucking dirt and we can't really tell what's going on. So then I'll just land right here, go over and take the plane. Yeah, I can't really uh, tell what's going on. This looks kind of like a like a just for you map. And I love how he's away from the class, like on his own, just off to the side whispering. Okay, so if I hit this spot and land here, we'll be all good to go. All right, and that was the safety demonstration. So uh, any questions or... You know, what the hell is he... Mike, get out of the fucking dirt. This is important shit. Jump in the plane and haul ass before they get done searching around over here. In other words, this ridiculously dangerous stunt should not be attempted even by the most professional professionals. So at this point, everything seems like it's going to go pretty smoothly. Well, as smooth as a plan like this could go. Until, of course, it doesn't. Because the instructor who I thought was Doug DeMiro for sure, pulls Mike aside to ask if he wants to help out in a demonstration up in the air. Some kind of group stunt with all of them, which, as you can imagine, would throw a wrench in Mike's plan. You cool with being a base and a big star? Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. And then he just 
Agrees, but what was he supposed to say? No thank you? I'll pass? I'd rather not? Yeah, actually, that's exactly what he should have said. I think the guy would have understood. <laughs> I think Mike just knew he had to stretch the runtime. And even doing that, it doesn't help because there are so many other things going on in this episode that is not this, and they take up way more time. I'm going to give him a little bit of cushion so he doesn't know we're right behind him. But keep an eye on which way he goes up here. So for this next one, what do you think these guys are going to be repoing on the TV show called Airplane Repo? If you guessed airplane, you'd be a big, stinky, stupid idiot. Why would you say that? They're, of course, going to be repoing a yacht. And not even a million-dollar yacht. A sub-million-dollar yacht. What the hell? A base model will cost you $300,000. But with luxury options, it can top a million bucks. Okay, I guess with options, it's technically a million-dollar yacht. But we find that out through their shitty 3D rendering that they do for everything they repo on this show. <laughs> and for this one, we're following Ken and Danny. Now, Ken is a repo man, and Danny is his protege, I guess, ex-repo man, who is not one now, but trying to be. I don't know what happens. I don't know how this shit works. Danny has served as Ken's apprentice. Also, it wasn't until now that I realized the narrator was Mike Rowe. So I guess they saved a few bucks on that since the Discovery Channel owns him. Now we find out that over time, as Ken's apprentice, Danny has, well, dropped the ball a few times. I'm highly recommended. He can find anything. They're starting to fool. Except his car keys. It took off with the books, man. You gotta be Kidding me. So for this one, he really needs to prove himself, and so far it's not looking great because he can't keep his eye on the goddamn prize. That's that's a no, that's about 07, 550 horsepower from the factory. We mentioned it to the bank. They said right now all they want is that boat. I don't know what it is about repo men, but they just can't not repo. It's like it's in their blood, like the lizard lick episode. They ruin the goddamn chicken picking for a good score. This is a freaking get together for our friends and family, Bobby. Two words for you. Uh-huh. Mercedes convertible. Ken readies to launch the 58-foot yacht before the former owner returns. Hey, stop! Cut her off! And of course, this can't be a smooth operation. It never can. There's always something like rope being tied to the propellers of the boat. Don't worry, though. That'll only take up the entire fucking episode. And just when I thought we were getting back to Mike's section, you know, the whole reason I picked out this episode, we get a whole other plot line. God damn it. This time we check up with Kevin, who I thought was Mike. I actually just thought they were both the same person, but can you blame me? They're the same brand of person. They've both got that drinks a case of Milwaukee's best every day, but somehow makes it to their 90s kind of look. I'm gonna skip this one though. We'll see more of Kevin later. I just want to get back to the skydiving bit and God damn it, more of the boat. And they're still spending most of the time getting this boat free, but don't worry, it works out. Even though it doesn't sound like it will, it sounds like the sun's gonna fucking explode every second. Now, the whole time Danny's been trailing the owner of the boat, thinking that he's going to go back to the boatyard and catch him in the act, when he's actually going to the country club. But this is actually a good thing, because it gives Danny the opportunity to prove himself and steal this car on top of the boat. Sorry, not steal. Fucking repo. They say steal all the time, though. <laughs> but before that, we finally check back in with Mike on the skydiving heist. Thank God. The only way to make it anywhere near his landing zone is to continue falling after the rest of the group pulls their chutes. Once they make it up in the air, they end up doing that stunt that we talked about earlier, and it goes well. They do it, and Mike breaks off from the group. 4,300 feet from Earth, the group deploys their chutes. But Mike has plans of his own. So far, so good with Mike, but I know what you're thinking. What the hell is going on with Danny and that Ferrari? And don't worry, they cut right back to it after only three minutes of this. Now, Danny's plan to sneak into this country club and steal a Ferrari from the valet should go pretty easy, as you would imagine, given that he blends right into a country club. <laughs> A51. Bye-bye. Now while this plan did end up going quite smoothly, you've gotta admit, what a terrible fucking valley. He shouldn't have been able to do this, and he's just like, see ya. Oh, about 140 miles an hour. 140 miles per hour, why? What's the rush? It's not like the guy's trailing you. You took his fucking car. This repo job didn't go quite as planned after Danny wrapped the Ferrari around a telephone pole going 140 miles an hour. Two minutes and 20 Okay. God, this guy always looks like he's on the verge of exploding out of his shirt, or just exploding in general. Like, he looks so... Hot. Like that sweat right there is walking from the car to the restaurant sweat. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, Danny earned his stripes. Good, fun, whatever. Let's just please get back to the skydiving. God fucking damn it! Alright, he fixes the plane, everything works out, fine, great. Let's please just get back to the skydiving. Screaming toward the ground at speeds in excess of 150 miles an hour. 
is Repo Matt, you know, make that superhero, Mike Kennedy. Okay, alright, he's just skydiving. Let's calm down. <laughs> Mike deploys his chute, not a second too late, at a dangerously low altitude of 1,900 feet. 1,900 feet? Jesus Christ, he's gonna snap his legs in half when he hits the ground. Guys, nice, feel exposed here. They should have no problem sneaking in, especially because their jumpsuits are the brightest colors on the planet. $7,000 for skydiving here, I'm not leaving that behind. And they'll probably, like, charge you for it since it's, you know, not your property. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, if the cameraman was in the plane and now he's on the ground, I don't give a shit. Mike hit pay dirt with a whopping $35,000 payday. See, that wasn't so hard to follow, just seven different plot lines. So I wanted to cover this next episode, and this one has a lot more of Kevin, who is not Mike, because he's a different person named Kevin. This episode. Well, it starts off a bit chaotic. I think we're gonna need some context. Three hours of context, specifically. Nice. Uh, registered one, right, two, three, zero, for five, five, Yankee. His airplane recovery expert, Kevin Lacey. I feel like Kevin, more so than Mike, fits that build I mentioned earlier about drinking a case of beer and making it to your 90s. I just know, though, he's got that skinny, tan old man strength. Like, he could snap me in half, no problem. <laughs> get to go see old girlfriend today, you know it? Look, I know it's super common for people to refer to their possessions or vehicles, like, as females, but I feel like when Kevin does it, it's a bit more than that. It feels like a he-fucks-that-plane kind of level. Hailing from France, the Falcon 20 is a classic among business jets. Once again, we get that super sick Microsoft Flight Simulator demo of what they're going to be stealing that day, which I assume probably most of the budget, aside from Micro, goes to. And of course, Million Dollar Plane. The million dollar plane is coveted by collectors. Now what makes this job extra spicy is who they're repoing it from. Kevin's old boss, who he has a rocky past with. While getting revenge on his former boss. Oh, that bastard, he don't deserve her. Also, this guy has no taste in shirts, Jesus Christ. I would repossess this airplane for free. Kevin's accomplice and co-pilot, Frank the Tank. Oh my god, we have another roided out sidekick. This time it's Frank the Tank. I just can't keep up with all these people, and they have similar names too. Like Frank, Ken, Mike, you could interchange them and it all kind of still work. With Frank giving the all clear, Kevin bypasses security by flying himself into the airport. All right, boys, y'all ready for a rodeo? Kind of an oversight in security, I think. Like, him being able to just bypass security by flying into the airport, like... Oh, shit. Built this tall fence, and I didn't even think about planes. Can't wait for like seven aviation experts to grill me in the comments for my lack of airport knowledge. So now we're gonna check in with Mike for a little bit, who is not Kevin, a fact I've always known. Now for this job, Mike's helping out another guy with a repo because apparently no one else will because Mike's just fucking crazy. Airplane repo specialist Mike Kennedy has been called into a job by a competitor. Now apparently the reason no one will help this guy is because on top of not making his payments, this guy's also trafficking endangered wildlife. And uh, yeah, Mike looks like he can handle that. And then some. I have a lot of licenses that not very many people have. In fact, when the state of Florida confiscates animals like that, they, they call me to come get them. Got a lot of licenses that other people don't have. Also, I'm not afraid to do stuff that requires me to have a license I don't have. When he's not repossessing planes... There we go. Uh, got a good bite. Come on. Mike's passion is rescuing exotic animals. Come on. Come on. There you go. In his backyard, you'll find an arc's worth of crocodiles, snakes... Yeah. ...and big cats that Mike cares for. Holy shit, this guy's like Exodia the Forbidden One, but a Florida man. It's like, have you ever looked at a person and thought, You've been shot before. Buy a gun, and it's not the worst thing that's happened to you. Look at that, it damn near opened itself. I'd call that an open invitation. Is there ever a hanger on this show that is locked? I have yet to see one. Let's see what's in here. Alright, stand back. What the hell? I thought you said you could handle these things. Well, I'd say we did. You know, brother, this place is ten, eleven thousand acres is what I've understood. Wow. And there's two that I don't even think a really good can get across. And it wouldn't be an episode of Airplane Repo if there wasn't someone repoing anything but a fucking airplane. So the asset in question is this monstrosity, and it brings them to a well, a, a get together, and it's so fucking redneck it puts the chicken pick into shame. 
Unfortunately, it's going to be a little harder for them to blend in here because they have a Discovery Channel camera crew with them, not a True TV one. That would probably help them fit in a lot better. You know, there's probably already two other True TV shows being filmed there right now. I mean, that's no! actual, that's Watch this guy, he's pulling out now. This mega truck of mud bogging dreams is a highly modified Ford F-150. It's hilarious they even bothered making a 3D model of this thing. <laughs> so as the guys figure out how they're gonna steal this truck, we check back in with Kevin and his boss's plane. Now I just caught this, but seeing that cameraman off to the side kind of makes me want to retract what I said before. He does look like he would fit in at that function. No two bottles are empty. Has ground to a halt. How about that sabotages? And of course, Hiccup in the plan, the plane doesn't run, so he's got to tow it over to a secured hangar so he can fix it before the guy comes back. And along the way, Kevin's old boss shows up, and they have, uh, well, they have a greeting, all right. Don't stop in front of the airplane. Damn, I almost hit him. Did you see that? With nothing to lose, the debtor risks damaging his own plane to stop Kevin. I'm having a heart attack. Time you took my money. You owe me money. I got news for you. Now things really start to heat up. Don't worry though, we're cutting back to the not airplane repo on airplane repo. Ken and Danny are chasing down a hundred and fifty thousand dollar mega truck. And of course, another hiccup, they get stuck. Hi, bro. Hold on, man. But their own truck isn't up to the task. Don't worry though, after some time of being stuck, they stop being stuck. Thank God. Well done. When we check back in with Mike, we get probably the most action we've seen this episode from behind a fence with Mike, 100 feet away. <laughs> oh, good deal. Fish and Wildlife got their bad guy and I got my plane. Sorry, I spoke too soon. Mike actually does end up getting some action because they decided the best thing they can do right now is to send Mike in undercover on a sting operation to foil this illegal endangered wildlife trade. The show is called Airplane Repo, just in case you understandably forgot. This can't be an official request, and I hate to ask. Well, why don't you let me make the drop then? Mike agrees to deliver the cargo and complete the sting operation. What the narrator is about to say, I feel like, kind of sums up the show pretty well in just one sentence. Repo man Mike Kennedy is flying a repossessed $2 million Cessna caravan loaded with poisonous snakes. I hope my buddy's got his agents in position. This guy takes one look at the cockpit, this whole thing is blown. Are you telling me this guy's not used to seeing Discovery camera crews every time he does an illegal animal trade? <laughs> Wait, is that Bobby from Lizard Lake Towing? <laughs> For now, the animal smuggling ring is broken. Bad guy taken down. And Mike got his plane. Damn. Tonight, Mike is infinite. He is the main character. Even though I picked out the goddamn episode for Kevin's plot, which is a collective three minutes apparently. I said that line thinking we were gonna cut back to Kevin, but silly me for assuming we'd see more airplane repoing in Airplane Repo, the show Airplane Repo. So up until now, Ken and Danny have been having trouble getting past this guard dog, so they have a solution. Armed only with a plate of barbecue. Oh, uh, here he comes. Holy <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just went and got lunch and this solution was an afterthought. They're just like, well, we got the steak. Danny's plan is both foolhardy and for now, effective. I don't know who is worse at their job. That valet that let Danny steal a Ferrari or this useless guard dog. We gotta get our ass out of here. Get in the truck. <laughs> Danny the Bull has returned. I can't believe that worked. I guess this dog was just a nothing issue this whole time. Like, why didn't Danny try the one trick every dog knows a little bit earlier? With Danny holding the Mastiff at bay. Hurry the f up. I'm working it! It's up to the CEO to swipe the truck. You know, maybe they should just let Great Value Undertaker drive that thing. He looks much more capable than Ken, but I forgot, he's busy telling that dog to sit, something only Danny can do. Man, what, come on, bro, come on, man. And can we talk about how little situational awareness the owner of this truck has? All this has been going on outside, the guard dog, everything, starting up the trucks, and he's just now coming out, you know? The answer is it's fake. That can answer every question you have on this show. <laughs> that 
Did it once? Skydiving with a motor on your back, that's a new concept. I've always liked intensity. I like anything fast. They will do anything they can to not show the repossession of an airplane on this show, titled Airplane Repo. Like, what is this paramotor clip? They have so little footage of Kevin, it's insane. <laughs> wanted to experience everything there was. If I haven't experienced it yet, I want to. That was a blast. Okay, anyways. I got news for you, son of a bitch. Yeah, 911, I've got two used car salesmen beating the shit out of each other on this airstrip, and there's like four guys filming it, so if you could just, just get here as quick as possible. Damn it, I gave it to you. What's going on? What's going on? I'm repossessing an airplane. Okay. You want to tell us what's going on here? I'm repossessing an airplane. Yeah, it uh, looks like it. So Kevin gets his paperwork, shows the officers, everything's all good, he's legit. His boss is charged with assault because, yeah, Kevin's face fucking shows it. His face is bleeding just as much as you'd imagine an old man on blood thinner's face would bleed. Sir, whatever you get. Thanks for your help. All right, we'll see ya. Come on back to the car. For his arrangement with fish and wildlife. Last thing I need is more mouths to feed, but what the hell. A dozen more snakes will shack up at Mike's house. There's my good deed for the day. I don't know the logistics of really anything being done on this show at all, but them just letting Mike take those animals home with him doesn't sound correct to me. <laughs> After a split with the other repo agent, Mike earns a $100,000 payday. So it looks like a happy ending for the guys. We've got two airplanes repoed, a monster truck repoed, an illegal endangered animal crime ring taken down, all on airplane repo. <laughs> Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like rating, comment, share with your friends. It all helps me out a ton. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, stay up to date on all my uploads. With all that being said, thank you guys again for watching. Thank you to Casetify for sponsoring. My link below. Check it out, get some cases. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.